we have everyone here is the zebra that Taylor found yesterday and spent a lot of time with yesterday afternoon and yeah I mean I, this is the first time I've seen it you can see it's definitely obviously looking at the pain that it must be feeling and of course you cannot read pain off an animal's face can you so seldom are you able to actually read what they're feeling from the expressions that they wear because their faces are not very expressive. Yeah, I mean, that's a flap of skin. It's a, what might be described as a flesh wound. It's a very, very severe one. But what I thought was quite interesting, we watched the zebra move a bit. And I don't think that that stomach issue or certainly the skin flap is going to be the zebra's problem. I think its biggest problem seems to be a limp on the right back leg. And if it cannot get rid of that, then it is going to fall victim to a predator. But clearly, you know, uh, it's not rotting, it's not making a stink up, and so it hasn't attracted any predators. And what's quite interesting to me, we're sitting here at the fireside chat area. There are a whole lot of little impala off to the left-hand side. And they, you know, you would imagine almost that animals by this stage of their evolution would know to avoid animal, other animals that are going to attract predators, which clearly the impala are not doing. They're very happily lying down in the vicinity of the zebra, and the zebra is clearly also spending time uh, with the impala for security purposes. There's also a wildebeest around here, just in front of us. I've just noticed him. See him there? Just behind the tree. He's hiding behind the apple leaf tree there. There we are. Now, a lot of you are amazed that he's still alive. And we go into this discussion again of, you know, what should we do? Should we help? Should we not help? Should we put him out of his misery, not put him out of his misery, leave him? What, what should be the, what should happen here? Because clearly he's done for. Uh, well, that's not so clear, you see. And I think it's going to be fascinating to see whether this zebra does actually survive or not. Because the resilience of the animals out here is quite phenomenal. And Red, you say, what are the chances of it surviving? I don't know. I don't know what the chances are. Um, I could give it a number, but I really don't think it would be very meaningful at all. I don't think we have any idea what the chances are. That's a severe injury, but it's not internal. Yes, there's a lot of skin missing. That skin flap could well hold the animal back. I just, I don't know. I can't see if this was a stallion or a mare. Did you... A young mare. So that's, you know, at least that skin flap is not going to extend over the sheath. And so because it doesn't extend over the penis sheath there, at least there won't be any form of um, internal injury via that way. So that is just a skin flap, just a skin flap, I say. And as Taylor said yesterday, it's going to take a long time to rot off because it is very big. And it quite a long time to be replaced, of course. So, I mean, I think that that zebra probably needs two weeks free of harassment in order to, to get through this. If it is harassed again within the next 14 days <laughs> or so, can you hear the GNU? A bow. It's giving a little territorial call. So if it is, remains unharassed for the next 14 days or so, let's, I mean, I'm guessing here, then I think she'll probably survive. But if not, if the lions were to come back here, I think she'll really struggle to get away. Aaron, you're wondering if it's rare for prey to get away from predators with bad wounds. Yes, well, clearly. I mean, she... I think she's going to struggle to run. It looks to me like her back leg is sore, 
Um, I'm not sure, Craig reckons maybe it's because of the wound that she's sort of limping along a bit. So, Aaron, yes, it would be rare for her to get away from, uh, you know, from an animal once if were they to try and harass her again. But, you know, it's possible. And I don't know why it is that the lions let her go. The lions let her go... Presumably because she managed to exhaust them sufficiently that they couldn't keep on with her. She may well have done some injury to those lionesses. I suspect it was those two lionesses. And that's a relatively large prey item for two lionesses to have a go at. Uh, you see, I'm not sure that is just skin. It looks to me like there's quite a lot of swelling where the skin is attached there. You know what, I think she was actually on the ground. This looks to me like she was on the ground as well. And Bobby, yeah, you see she's limping on that leg. No, she's, if that doesn't heal, she'll, she'll die. Bobby, you say, will the skin grow back normally? No, it won't. She will be scarred for life if she survives. It'll be a fairly severe scarring. The skin is already drying up, but you see how she cannot put any weight on the back right leg. So I don't know if that's got to her hip. Maybe she just pulled a muscle. But it looks to me like she was down on the ground and then managed to get up and kick off the lionesses who probably by that stage were so exhausted they couldn't carry on. You see, that back leg is a disaster. Shame. And Michael, yeah, I mean, that would be the, the fear for a human being, wouldn't it? If you had an injury like a human, like that as a human being, your greatest fear would be infection. And certainly, I mean, you read these stories of ancient battles before the advent of antibiotics and how even the smallest cut could result in festering wounds and the growth of, or the um, development of severe infection, which would then result in death. And we look at an animal like this and think, well, surely, I mean, there's no washing going on there. That animal must surely get an infection and drop dead from it. I think it's very rare out here, Michael. These animals are in, con in the conditions to which they evolved. There are no foreign pathogens that could get into that that they haven't survived with for hundreds of thousands of years. So I think that infection is the smallest risk she faces right now. I think the greatest risk she faces is that back leg because without it she cannot run and if you cannot run out here yee, then you are going to be in trouble very kindly the biting flies have managed to get up nice and early today so they've started savaging our legs Craig have you been bitten yet? not yet, not yet. I must be